and welcome back to my channel. So today is a very different video. I did mention in my last one that I was thinking about doing it and I'm doing it. So basically grab a cuppa because it is going to be a long one. Um, it is to do with my injury when I was 18 years old. So if this doesn't interest you, I completely understand. Click on out, it's fine. But the reason that I'm doing this video is basically because when I had my surgery, I turned to things like Instagram and YouTube and any form of social media to try and find out as much information as I could about my injury and other people's experience and recovery and all that fun slash not so fun stuff. <laughs> but there was nothing out there, so this is why I'm doing it. If you do hear any noises, please excuse them. I am in the family home now, at home in Leeds and the family is around and we're having some work done downstairs. So if it's noisy, I apologise. We're gonna move on and just ignore. So we're just gonna get into it. I'm gonna literally take you from beginning to end my experience and hopefully it'll reassure some of you if you have similar injuries or if you are just a dancer or a sports person. What? Am I alright? You get the gist. And if you have injuries and it hopefully will just put your mind at ease just a wee bit. So let's get into it because I've rambled for like two minutes. Good. One thing I also want to mention, I will be putting in pictures maybe this side of things as I go some of which may be a little bit gory not all of them are going to be my pictures because unfortunately I didn't get things like my x-rays and stuff like that and my scan results to keep so I will be putting up examples of each thing hopefully on there and some of my personal pictures as well there we go so just to give you a little bit of dance history I have danced pretty much forever <laughs> since I was tiny and then when it got to college age I was doing my old theatre dance school back at home which now teach at I was also at Kappa College in Wakefield which is now opening a free school if any of you are, are coming up to college age and are interested in performing arts and you're in the north of England please let me know because I would love to tell you all about Kappa anyway then I was at Northern School of Contemporary Dance on their youth kind of dance scheme I was doing that most supposed to be doing that for about three years um and it was cut short we'll get into that and I was also still doing pantos and shows outside of college and stuff as well so very very busy so the way that my injury started and came about and all that jazz in one of my classes at northern we used to have a fitness class on a Tuesday and then contemporary class on a Thursday and then all day Saturday would be all classes in my fitness class on the Tuesday I just kind of got an aching in my hip and I was like oh pulled it woo good times um, but it was one of those things where you just kind of like oh yeah pulled my groin whatever gonna get over it um didn't even do anything didn't it wasn't that bad that I needed to ice it or anything like that it was just kind of like uh, one of those things and then I woke up and it was really stiff so I just kind of presumed that I'd kind of pulled my hip flexor or something like that again just like a little niggle and it kind of went on like that for about a week and I just kind of thought mm, well, it's not really getting any better I think I probably iced it a couple of times or whatever just to see what was going on and whether that could improve it but it didn't and one morning in ballet at college I sat on the floor afterwards to take my shoes off and get ready for my next class and suddenly I felt like I couldn't really get back up like the pain in my hip was like oh and instead of feeling like it was on the outside like muscular pain it felt much deeper and I was like oh my god <laughs> so obviously I panicked and I didn't know whether it was just because the injury was getting cold and it was being made to feel worse or whatever but I panicked so from there we kind of went to see physios and this is where the journey <laughs> begins. So I went to my physio, I don't even remember which the first physio was, basically I went for a few. Hmm. My biggest advice to you basically is to find a physio that cares, <laughs> basically. If you are on an NHS physio, maybe just keep asking for different ones, I don't know. Um, I'm very, very, very lucky and extremely grateful that my mum provides private healthcare through her work and all that kind of thing, so I'm very aware that I am very lucky but even with private medical the first couple of physios that I had were just not good like they just didn't really care and um, I told them I was a dancer and they were like mm, just take a few weeks off and I was like mm, babs this is my exams this is my career this is hmm bearing in mind this is my first year of college like, moving into my second year this was around I want to say October time so just started college but already you start thinking about your vocational colleges and where you want to study and you have to get prepped fitness wise technique wise to go into audition so I'm panicking and no one cares it literally felt like no one cared or understood that dance was a 
a career and not something that I was just kind of doing for fun and I feel like if you're in the same position you can, you understand that anyway they tried multiple things so basically the physio was kind of treating me for tight hips and strains and stuff which I thought was legit at, this, at the time as well to be honest and then another physio treated me treat me is that right? Treated me for hip flexor damage and overuse. Again, kind of repetitive strain. And I was like, well, it's just not getting better. And progressively it was getting worse. Every time I would do um, a Grand Batman or Devil Pays or anything like that in ballet, I'd feel like a sense of like trapping or like pinching, like almost like a trapped nerve. So that was another thing. So I went to a different physio and they did something called hip distractions where it almost like put like a seatbelt thing around me. I don't know. And kind of physically pulled my hip out, not out of the socket, but kind of moved it around so that then it would free up anything trapped in there if that makes sense again did not work and then finally I came across my physio she's called Sarah Joyce she's based in Leeds so again if any of you are looking for physios and you're based in the north Sarah Joyce is amazing if you want to go with her message me because with her consent I will give you her details or whatever but as soon as I saw Sarah, she ruled out anything like strain and all that kind of thing and she said, I completely understand, I'm an ex-dancer and I understand what you're going through. By this time, it was probably Christmas time, maybe January. And she said, straight away, I'm gonna send you off for tests. And I was like, what tests? And obviously then you get a little bit more scared because you're like, oh, someone's actually taking me seriously and that's a good thing, but then you obviously panic, like, oh my gosh, I'm terrified. Um, but anyway, so she sent me to get tests. I went to meet a doctor slash surgeon called Professor Shoulders. This man is very important. He changed the game for me. And here's the reason that I'm dancing today. So I met Professor Shoulders, who is the pioneer for the surgery that I ended up needing. And he kind of took me through what we were going to do that day and all that kind of thing. And basically I needed, let me get this right. Mum, if I get it wrong, please put it in the comments. I had, I want to say either an MRI or a, or a cat, one of those, basically to see if there was um, muscle or ligament or anything kind of damaged. But basically the main thing that I had was an arthrogram. So this is a scan that involves putting dye into the area of injury. So in my case, it was my hip socket and <laughs> I didn't know I was having it because my mum knew if she told me the truth that I was getting a giant Mac off needle put in my hip full of dye, then I probably wouldn't do it. I am a fainter. I've said this before, story times will come soon. But basically what they do is inject dye into the socket um, and take pictures of it. And I was laid there on the bed like, okay, what's happening? And he was like, I'm just gonna apply some local anesthetic with a needle and I was like, Sorry, for what? Basically, he explained what he was doing and I saw a screen on the side <laughs> that showed my hip and I didn't realize it was my hip. He was, it was under the x-ray machine. And it, I could literally see the needle in my hip socket and I was like, is that me? And he was like, mm-hmm. And I was like, oh my God. But it didn't hurt. Obviously I was under anesthetic. Couldn't feel a thing, but obviously I freaked because I didn't have a clue what was going on and I was not prepared. Thank you, mum. So that was done. I think it only took about 15 minutes. My mum was waiting in the waiting room and why did I tell her how I felt about that? Anyway, so that was done and I can't remember when it was. I don't know whether we found out straight away or a few days later or a couple of weeks later. Do not remember. But there was a little bit of a wait, I think, before I went to go see Professor Shoulders again for my follow-up. So... One thing I will mention is if you have your arthrogram, they recommend not dancing or doing crazy physical activity for like 24 to 48 hours, which I completely understand because you just feel a little bit weird, like your hip feels dense, if that makes sense. Like you, you kind of you kind of feel that something is in there that, that really shouldn't be in there, if that makes sense, but it's not uncomfortable whatsoever. But again, you will have a couple of days off whatever sport or performance thing you choose to do. Um, so this is when I came back and visited Professor Shoulders for the second time and he basically sat me down, nonchalant, just sat there in front of me and said, so this is your arthrogram picture and this is your tear, you have a labral tear in your hip and it's bad and you're gonna have to take about six months off your training. And I was like, come again? And it's one of those things where you know that something's going on and you know that something's a little bit bad and something's not right but then when someone turns around and says yeah it's seriously bad and you're gonna need about six months off you're like oh okay so yeah he told me that and I was like oh my god what's going on like I don't I'm not okay with this anyway so he explained to me that there is an option of having steroid injections now this is a touchy subject if you are 
involved with this injury and you're on NHS, I believe that they now make you have steroid injections. Um, Professor Shilders said to me, in his opinion, that the only scenario that he would use steroid injections is if they, if he basically needed to get a dancer through a season. So if he, if he was working with a dancer from the Royal Ballet or something like that and they needed to get through a season of Swan Lake and whatever, blah blah blah, he would give them steroid injections just to kind of see them through but the steroid injections don't really heal the area because basically a labrum I've not even mentioned what it is yet a labrum is the cartilage in your hip socket just above the head of your femur my tear was this way like diagonally so basically around your cartilage area there isn't actually blood flow so it can't heal itself like other injuries which is why I needed the surgery so I basically discovered my injury around October time had my scans in February and was told around my 18th birthday that you are having surgery so I was like okay and then basically I had the option luckily again very grateful that I could kind of choose when I wanted my surgery obviously on NHS and all that kind of thing there will be longer waiting lists or whatever but I kind of chose to do it after my exams and he kind of let me choose that for myself I wasn't supposed to dance on it really <laughs> it was very painful but I chose that I wanted to finish out my year because basically I was already a year late in my studies because I started sixth form and decided that wasn't for me and I wanted to go straight into the arts so I already felt a year older and I didn't want to miss out and all that kind of thing I was like oh my gosh dancers shelf life mm -mm, can't miss another year so I decided I'm going for it I'm just gonna do my exams get them over with go through the pain whatever and then have my surgery at the end of the exams so yes it was painful but you have good days and bad days so and I'm, I'm, if you have this injury then you understand um, some days I could do full out dancing and I'd dance better than I ever danced because I knew that I wouldn't be able to for very much longer and then some days I could literally do freestyle walks in commercial and have to just leave the room afterwards because I literally just <laughs> mm -mm, couldn't do it um, but yeah so rolls around to when I have my surgery and this was May it was May 22nd which is actually my boyfriend Chris's birthday but we're not met at this point mm weird so basically the surgery is called an arthroscopy so similar to an arthrogram it's an arthroscopy mine was keyhole surgery so i have two teeny weeny diddly little scars and i will insert pictures here um and basically i had one night stay at the hospital and that was it so i went in i had my anesthetic went to sleep bish bash bosh and woke up very groggy and very drowsy a few hours later. I think it's about a three hour surgery, something like that. And I woke up and a lot of people ask, the first thing they ask is how much pain are you in when you wake up and is there a lot of pain? And it was weird because you know when you've got an injury and even if you're not doing anything, if you just sat down, you can feel that something is not right and it's painful or you get a dull ache somewhere and you're like, like it just doesn't let up and it, you can't really sleep or anything like that. When I woke up, that pain was gone gone gonners and i don't know whether that was just the morphine <laughs> it could have been but yeah couldn't feel any pain whatsoever just felt a bit weird because i knew that something had gone on down there but yeah so i had kind of bandages and stuff and they gave me ice packs as well just to make sure that the swelling wasn't too bad i got some really sexy socks <laughs> <laughs> to help with my circulation very flattering but yeah so I woke up and I was absolutely fine and dandy uh didn't have much of an ap appetite I would say the worst pain that I was in wasn't with my hip it was actually with the medication and my stomach like a little bit TMI but it kind of made me a little little constipated um which really hurt my tummy but other than that absolutely fine so I stayed one night overnight slept over and then I think the worst thing for me was in the morning when they try and help you on with your crutches and things like that so they <laughs> it took a few attempts because I'm a little fainter and I'm a bit pathetic they brought me my crutches and they were like right we're gonna start you walking now let's try and get you out of bed and get you moving so the first goal was to just get me up walk over to the loo do my bits and come back and just you know get a feel for walking again obviously not putting pressure on with crutches so they gave me my crutches and I went super lightheaded even before I got off the bed and I don't know whether it was just a little bit overwhelming or the meds still in me or whatever but the nurses were super patient really nice and after a couple of attempts I managed to get out of bed and maneuver around and basically for the first few weeks you literally don't put any weight through that hip at all um understandably so once I'd done that they took me up and down a flight of stairs so that I could kind of get used to it and that was it they literally brought me a wheelchair and I was wheeled out and that was it put in the car go home recover I was like oh okay so 24 hours done 
in, done, gone, out the door, sorted, fixed. Thankfully, I had the best physio in the entire world ever on this planet who put together a really, really, really good recovery program and in conjunction with Professor Shilder's notes and things like that, I basically recovered really well. So, I'd say that I recovered in five months rather than six. So I had my, my surgery in May and by mid-September, early October, I was back fully dancing, rehearsing for Move It. If you're a dancer, you know how full out Move It can be. So that kind of puts into perspective the level of dance that I could do after five months. So, oh my gosh, this is a super long video. I really apologize. Recovery wise, this is kind of the, the main section for people. So my biggest recommendation is to use a bike. Buy a bike, get one off Gumtree. Obviously a, 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 a sit bike, like a, a stationary bike, what? Gym bike, without any sort of tension. What is it called? Oh my Lord. I don't know, just freely cycling with no kind of weight. So from day two, I think it was, I think I had one or two days that I literally did nothing. And then on straight, pretty much straight away, I was on the bike. I think it was 20 minutes, I don't know, three times a day. And then it kind of increased from there. And I was doing like 40 minutes at a time on a bike and just loving my Netflix life just here. And that really helps because basically it kind of keeps your joint moving so that it doesn't stiffen up, but then it doesn't use any of the muscles or like, hurt or damage anything that's going on in there it's just really gentle movement and constant and regular you know um another few things that i did was using theraband so when i f when i started dancing a little bit again um i worked in parallel a lot just doing strengthening things working with the theraband very light tension don't do anything crazy i then did a lot of that kind of stuff in a pool using hydrotherapy, nothing special. I literally went to my local swimming pool, looked like a bit of a weirdo in like the free swim time. Just stood at the side like this. It doesn't look like I'm doing anything because it's all very small. Um, just stood at the side of the pool doing my exercises. But again, it works the muscles without being too heavy duty and stuff and all that jazz. Any injury, hypnotherapy. Do your physio in the pool. And then my physio started stretching me and I remember being absolutely terrified. She had me in splits, I think a few weeks after my op, <laughs> like quick. Again, one thing that I will say is be patient though. Don't push yourself. If you feel like your body isn't ready to do that or you do feel pain, you listen to your body, do what you feel is best because it's so much more important to wait and be patient and recover properly than push yourself too soon and then be back all over again <sighs> having the absolute nightmare all over again you just don't want it so listen to your body take things slow it's so much better that way don't push it so yeah stretching and then i moved on to running which was exciting so obviously this is over a course of a few a good few weeks um so I went from obviously both crutches to one crutch and like assisted walking. So I was putting pressure through my foot a little bit, um, but with the assistance of the other crutch. And then I kind of weaned myself off to no crutches at all. I also hit my milestones quite early. So I wasn't supposed to drive for the first month. And I think I was driving after, I want to say two, three weeks. Don't hold me to that, but three weeks at the latest, I was already back driving. And then basically bit by bit, I worked up my dancing. So I went back to college in the September and while everyone was prepping hardcore doing insanity every morning and pushing themselves to the limit and um, getting ready to, for auditions and stuff like that I was literally stood at the bar at the back of the room doing probably about grade three ballet <laughs> but again you've just got to take everything at your own pace I got to my auditions I got into Lipper and I am graduated and super happy and super strong now so I cannot reiterate enough cannot reiterate enough how important it is to listen to your body and take things slow and don't be pressured by anything because that i felt like my injury had come at the worst possible time because i was basically sending off my applications to places to audition in a couple of months and i couldn't even dance yet and i was fully panicking but as long as you put the work in i know it sounds like you can't work that hard when it's small physio milestones but it's consistency that's the important thing so working hard making sure that you're concentrating on recovery nutrition all that kind of thing so that when you come back into dancing again that you can snap back into it i made sure that i was keeping up other things so upper body strength and things like that on my abs as long as i wasn't getting too into the hip flexors and stuff um 
just so that when I got back into my dancing then I could go in full force. That is pretty much my story. I am now fully dancing again. The only thing I would say is my hip tightens a little bit more. I struggle to get into my left split because my hip flexor on this side, if you can imagine, is a little bit tight, but doesn't stop me at all. It hasn't reduced my flexibility. In fact, when I went back for my checkups and things, you have checkups again, forgot this, woo. Um, there's kind of monthly checkups or six month checkup blah 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 and they take my measurements and my strength tests and my injured hip actually became stronger than the healthy hip if that makes sense and it was actually more flexible in range so i've actually got better turnout now <laughs> what it's not all bad work hard and injuries aren't gonna stop you i was heartbroken when i was told that i wasn't gonna be able to dance because my college were doing west side story which is my second all-time favorite miss saigon comes first but second all-time favorite musical probably my favorite musical at the time and i was sat there not being able to be in it and i was distraught like they were singing through the songs and i was like oh anyway it's all right it's all sunshine and rainbows now kids she's graduated she's dancing so i've probably missed out so much that i wanted to say in this video but I mean it's like half an hour long so I'm not going to talk anymore but if you have any questions whatsoever whether it's regarding my injury or any sort of injury or tips or whatever ask away down below because I would like to answer them for you if you want me to go into more depth about anything then I can do in the comments or in another video what I might do if I get a lot of questions or messages from you or whatever I might put them into a separate Q&A around this topic we'll see how that goes but if you are injured if you're on that struggle bus, I understand, but you will get through it. No matter how bad it is, it's all gonna be okay in the end. It'll all come out on the wash. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you soon. Bye.